All right, folks. Um, so today we are looking um, at some concepts of AP Human Geography, such as different types of regions, types of density, and types of diffusion. Um, I wanted to make a video about this because I feel like generally um, you need to know why we have different types of regions, what are the different types of density used for, and what are the different types of diffusion used for. Um, the first thing we're going to look at is different types of regions. Now, I want you to think for a minute when we're talk talking about the types of regions. Um, we've come up with really three specific types of regions. So we have regions. For our purposes, we have um, formal. We have functional, and we have vernacular. Now, um, a formal region can also be known as, it has a few other names, you would call it a uniform region, or homogeneous region. An example of this would be um, a state such as Montana. This is an area where everyone shares in common one or more distinctive characteristic, which means everyone shares in common one distinctive characteristic. Everyone is under the laws of Montana. Um, it could be when you're looking at who did this area vote for for president. Um, when it came as a state, they voted mainly for this person. Um, it ref again, it refers to an area in which everyone shares one or more distinctive characteristics. One or more distinctive characteristics. One or more distinctive characteristics. That means unique. Characteristics. Now, um, when we're thinking about a region, we generally, it's more likely that you're going to be thinking of functional or vernacular. A functional region, a functional region is also known as a nodal region. And that means that there is kind of a focal point. Um, this is an area organized around a node or a focal point. Area. Okay, and here's where we would see this. This would be like how people in the Houston area tend to primarily be Astros fans. And that is centered around Houston. And as you get further and further outside of Houston, you see that kind of lead. It could also be, we talked about in class, um, a radio station like 104.1 KRBE Houston but it plays to other areas around Houston including Cyprus where we are because there's a central point which would be like um, the central point which would be like the um, radio tower and it emits signals and wherever those signals reach that is the area which within our functional region so it could be a TV station, radio station, etc. Um, and lastly, the region that is most difficult to define would be our vernacular regions. And it's a vernacular region, otherwise known as perceptual or mental map. And I mean, as these two imply, the reason it's so hard to define is because it literally has to do with a person's perception of the world. 
how do they view the world, what do they view it as. Um, and this could be, um, the proper definition is an area that people believe exists as a part of their cultural identity. So when we talked about this one, we referred to the South, the Midwest. And it's different depending on where you are. And people who we might consider the Midwest, if you go there, they may consider themselves part of the North. It really just depends on um, where people are and kind of what they view themselves as. Now, um, those are our basic types of regions. Those are our most basic type of region. Double check you, make sure I didn't miss anything. Anything. Okay, um, next up we're going to look at different types of density. Now, density is the frequency with, with which something occurs. Um, how often does it show up in a certain area? And there are three types of density we're going to look at. We're going to look at arithmetic density. I spell that right? Arithmetic, yeah. We're going to look at arithmetic density. We are going to look at physiological density. And we are going to look at agricultural density. Now, with arithmetic density, that's it's pretty basic. It's the total number of objects in a specific area. How many times does this show up per square mile? So this would be um, number of objects per square mile otherwise known as area. For instance, this would be the fact that, you know, Belgium has 900 people per square mile and China has 300 people per square mile. Um, if you remember, guys, the division sign here means per. Um, anyways, uh, 900, square mi 900 square miles versus 300 square miles which one has a higher density? Belgium has a higher density. Which country would be a higher populated? China is technically higher populated, but Belgium has the higher density. Um, now, when we're looking at physiological, that's just basic numbers density. When we're looking at physiological density, this is the number of people per unit area that is suitable for agriculture. So we're just looking at basic is it suitable for agriculture? And this a little bit plays into um, this a little bit plays into can it can you feed your people? Can you get them the food that they need? Can you get them at the access they need? Um, this one this one is to determine like yeah, suitable for agric agriculture. This physiological density is basically like, can your land sustain the amount of people you have? Capacity of land to sustain people. Now, ironically enough, when we look at what agricultural density measures, Agricultural density is the number of farmers per unit area of farmland. So this is, let me use a red, um, number of farmers per unit area of farmland. Basically, how many farmers do you have? Having farmers is great. Having farmers means your people are getting food. However, the drawback of having farmers and having the num a certain number of farmers per unit of area, if your land is all taken over 
by farmland, you don't have a lot of room for development. In fact, um, less developed countries are going to have a more agriculture-based economy. And so usually when we're measuring this, we are actually looking at how developed is the country. Okay, and then the last thing we're looking at in this video is the different types of diffusion. The different types of diffusion, and there are four primary types of diffusion. Um, and technically, there are actually two types of diffusion, and then um, under one of them, there's three different types that fall under that. The two types of diffusion there are, we start with expansion diffusion. Expansion diffusion refers to an idea. It's the spread of an idea. Or the spread of something, and it's um, it doesn't skip any steps. There is a, you can see where the source originated, and then everything that came out of it. For instance, we have un within expansion diffusion, it, we have um, hierarchical diffusion. Mm, I feel like I should keep writing in blue. We have hierarchical diffusion. Then we have contagious diffusion. And then lastly, we have stimulus diffusion. Now, I told you there's going to be four types of diffusion because the other type of diffusion that we're going to be talking about is relocation diffusion. And that's just from when people move from one area to another, how ideas spread. So hierarchical diffusion, basically, it's a spread of an idea from people of power starting at the hearth. The hearth is kind of where an idea originates. And then you have it going out from there to another group of people. And then from there, it spreads to another node of people. And kind of here, when we're talking about hierarchical diffusion, this could be like at Paris Fashion Week, um, a certain trend becomes available. That trend goes out to the major um, the big wigs of fashion design and they decide that department stores are going to start selling this type. Well then from the department stores it goes to discount and eventually we'll get to discount stores and kind of trickle down. Also it's like the idea that um, high tech will, a lot of times technology originates in um, Palo Alto, Silicon Valley and then eventually trickles down. Um, also it could be like with um, in NASA at NASA, they developed non-stick technology, which is now like used in kitchens, on kitchen pans. Um, it started at NASA, and people of power had it, and then other people realized how beneficial it was. It's my attempt at drawing like a non-stick pan. Contagious diffusion spreads to everyone equally. Um, it, he it hits each portion equally. Um, this one is all about hitting everybody equally, which means it starts here and then it trickles out. It doesn't matter, wealthy, poor, young or old, it kind of hits everybody. There's really no um, stopping it, but it originates in one area and then expands out from that. This could be like with disease. You guys read that book on um, cholera this summer. That's an example. Um, religion. It could be. It could be something as, as simple as silly bands. It doesn't really have. It doesn't pick any one group. It just equally spreads within an area. Now, stimulus diffusion refers to. Um, an underlying principle that even though the characteristic itself, the other uh, the underlying principle will spread even if the characteristic itself does not spread. Um, you could think about this in terms of 
the iPad touch screen. Before the iPhone, there was no touch screen. Like the idea of having a touch screen on a phone was like really new and nobody had seen it before. Well now it's on every type of phone that you have, no matter it's on iPads, it's on the Fire Stick model. These are me trying to, I'm really bad at drawing stuff like this. This is me trying to draw an Android phone, but I'm just not doing a very good job of it. Yay, artist. Um, touch screen tech. And again, this could even actually pair with the nonstick technology again. Um, that it's also it could also be stimulus diffusion because you spread the idea of nonstick, even though we don't have, you know, the space shuttle. We still are using this technology in other places. So it's the touch, the fact that the touch screen spread. Um, and then when we're looking at other types of diffusion, um, we're talking about language um, relocation diffusion is where people take cultural attributes with them. So cultural attributes. And the important part about this is when people take their cultural attributes with them, they take what they value, and then it gets adopted by other areas. Um, this could be language, food, culture, but that doesn't mean it's necessarily going to spread in the same way. But different areas could adopt um, could adopt some of those characteristics through this. So I hope that was helpful. Um, I'm just kind of a brief look at what it means, what the different types of diffusion, density, and regions are.